My early beginnings are part of being in a large family and a family with fairly low economic means. I actually still use an economy of means in my art practice and I think it gives me a more interesting way of seeing the world and producing work. I started out as a photographer and painter and thought that's what I want to be a painter. Somewhere, somewhere along the line I turned to printmaking and spent a quite considerable amount of time working in printmaking. I realised that I was suppressing photography under the surface and that seemed pointless to me. So I got back into photography. I wanted that primal, immediate, personal, simple response, a low technology response. I want to make work as a human being and not as a machine. So that in itself is a dichotomy if the camera is a machine. So I've taken the lenses off. I work mostly in cardboard and simple timber cam uh, cameras, solography and alternative and historical processes. And what they give me is a mixture of painting, printmaking, drawing, design. It's the best way I know of engaging with light. It's just so wonderful to be out there. I'm trying to say something from myself in a way that will still relate to people. As an older female living alone, lockdown for me was relatively easy. I'd go out every day and I would take little images of the sky and the clouds and I'd play with that universal light, the clouds over my house or the clouds over your house an hour later. And I felt connected to the world and not isolated at all, which was kind of odd. In the other part of what I did was, as I always do, make art with what I have, with the materials that I have on hand. It was harder to get materials, harder to get out. I had listened to information on the increase in domestic violence during lockdown, in people asking for help during lockdown. And while I'm in my safe little world, I wondered about those people. I also saw a documentary, and I think not for the first time, on the, the, the fashion uh, slave trade, women who are fighting to keep their kids working a few, you know, getting, earning a few dollars a week, making clothes that we consume. And here we are in lockdown. I have clothes I can't get rid of. There's nowhere to recycle. And I wondered about all these objects at the same time. So I wondered whether I should continue to play into that mindset and buy these clothes and support that fast fashion women's slave trade industry. And I thought, if I don't buy, She doesn't get paid. Sorry. And her kids don't get fed. I put all that together and I bought dresses online and I knew they would be less than adequate, but they were cheap. And they became the female body for me. You're in lockdown, you don't, you don't have access to people anyway. So I put these dresses out in my backyard in the sun on photographic paper on paper soaked with photographic sensitive, uh, light sensitive materials and I recreated these images and I fell in love with those works and then I thought am I exploiting these women finding beauty in their grief I thought you know what am I doing um, but I think by separating it down to a material dress form it left it less connected to a person a little more open to hiding who they are and not helping them in some way, letting people think about what's happening. But it's really odd to find beauty in photography when you're looking at an ugly subject. And I thought, what, what am I doing? What am I doing? What am I doing? But I did it anyway, because I fell in love with material, with the light. I fell in love with the process and I had such a fa fabulous time making it. And then the only way for me to degrade it and to use that dress as a body was photographically. So I bleached and toned and played around with that in the same way that you would be damaging and cutting and folding a human being. The, the images are not finished, the dresses are not finished, the process isn't, isn't done because there's a part of me that didn't want to degrade the beauty. There's a part of me that wanted to hang on to that. But I see that I will be making more post head on and then I'm going to kick the living daylights out of them. I'm going to kick them with my boots. I'm going to punch them and cut and tear and re-stitch them together. Um, 
wherever that goes and however they end up looking, I think that's an important thing to do.